Well, uh, this was a surprise. What is up, Finn fans? I don't know why. I just don't know why. I always put my flipping hands together. I'm going to sit on them next time. I got Omar Kelly on the channel. Got a little insider information. And boy, does he share some really good tidbits. What about Christian Wilkins that blew me away? Like, absolutely blew me away. Um, it's a great conversation with Omar. And I appreciate more than anything him coming on the channel. He he mentioned something in our conversation that you could see my face. I was in complete shock. Little backstory on me and Omar Kelly. It's mostly on me. Omar Kelly didn't really know about this. I've been following Omar for about seven years now, give or take, eight, six. It's been a while. It's been a few years. I've been doing this channel for five years. It's been a few years uh, forward in time. So five years, you know what I'm saying, that I've been following him. And a lot of what I learned in the aspect of trench work and a lot of what I learned in the aspect of what's important and how to do this stuff and how to communicate and, you know, your priorities and, you know, all this stuff was a good part from Omar Kelly. Obviously, I played football, so I learned some of that from that. But Omar also taught me a lot and he taught me about the whole, you know, communication with followers and covering sports and stuff was from Omar. So he mentioned something in our conversation that blew me away. So look out for it because you'll see my face go, <laughs> what? Um, but before we jump into this absolutely great conversation, I do have to shout out today's sponsor, and that is Clean the World. They have been sponsoring me for a hot minute now. You guys have constantly seen me talk about Clean the World. I am ecstatic to have them as a sponsor. I keep showing you guys these kits that they are putting together, which essentially the way Clean the World works is Sean Seipler, fantastic human being, put this company together because he noticed a lot of times in hotels, there'd be little slivers of soap left over that just get thrown away. So he says to the hotels, hey, give them to me. I'm going to repurpose them. He cleans the soap, repurposes them into these bars of soap right here, and he gives them to third world countries, natural disaster, uh, people affected by that, the homeless, all of these things and they get these awesome kits with socks shampoo toothbrush toothpaste the soap and these cards now you can't really see but on the you know i'm gonna take it out on these cards you can write something there you go you can write something and he's gonna start putting these kits together where he'll send them to you and you can put stuff in them and write the cards to make people feel better that are in a crappy situation so go support Clean the World, cleantheworld.org. Fantastic people, and I'm very happy to constantly be sponsored by them. Now let's jump into this absolutely fantastic conversation with Omar Kelly, and the link for his YouTube channel and all that will be in the description. Go support them, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with the Falcons joint practice. But like usual, stay classy, and fins up. I got Omar Kelly here. The great Omar Kelly. Let me add that to me. No, not the great. <laughs> the great Omar Kelly. The troublemaker. <laughs> how I described. The hey, rebel you rouser. The <laughs> you, you tell the truth. The difficult one. <laughs> I've been following you for a while. And it's funny because at first, when I started this, you were talking a lot about how like, People like you say one thing and then people take it and they spin it. And I'm like, well, I was watching you now that I've been doing this for like five years. Oh, I feel you on that, man. Like I say something good about Tua. People are like, oh, you're an, you're an apologist. And then I'm like, he needs to do better here. Why do you hate on that man so much? And I'm like, all I think is Omar Kelly. That's all I think to myself. Well, welcome to the club. Um, <laughs> what I, what I like about what I do is let, let me, let me, bring that back. Um, I'm doing what I do because I love sports from the time I was probably in seventh grade. I remember writing fake columns and, and, you know, talking, proposing possible trades. And I used to listen to sports talk radio and it, I was just fascinated with it. Now, the problem that I see with what I'm doing is, you know, I always wanted people to value my opinion. And now my opinion is way too important to everybody. <laughs> um, and so that creates challenges and challenging moments for me. 
Um, what I don't like is when people take what I say and even though I'm very thorough in what I say or try to be at least very thorough in what I say and how I explain things. And from my position, you got to understand, like my biggest issue and struggle is I write what I want to write. Mm -hmm. I write what I feel the fan base needs to know. Like right now, I'm obsessed with Emmanuel Ogba's transition to outside linebacker because it mm. doesn't look good to me and I don't like it. Um, and I understand the reasoning and the thought process, but it looks like somebody setting the team is setting him up for failure. Now I could be very wrong. I don't like what's going on with chosen. Mm. Now everybody can have their, my whole thing as a journalist is I have to get to the, I have to one spotlight it and let you know that this is going on. You don't hear anything about Chosen because he might get five reps during 11 on 11. Yeah, yeah. Which is like absolutely, you know, for a guy who you thought would be competing for the number three spot or at least yeah. the number four spot, like he's getting less reps than undrafted rookies. Wow. Now, why? Yeah. And getting to the answer of why. But so I write things that I want to write and things I need, I feel like the fan base needs to be educated on. Unfortunately, a lot of people take that as spin mm. or he's got an agenda. Like somebody said something to me like the other day, oh, you you got an agenda. And I really thought to myself, like I, I really thought to myself, especially having come back to doing this now mm. after a year of uh, taking it off, taking off. Like, what is possibly my agenda? <laughs> uh, other than like my agenda, my whole life has to be to hold the team that you love accountable to the fan base. That's yeah. like the sole agenda I have in life. Like, that's why I sat here for seven years and said, Ryan Tannehill's not good enough. 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 <laughs> Do something. Like, it's to hold the fan. You're wasting time. And, you know, uh, and... Like, I don't have people like you have an agenda. I'm like, what is my possible agenda? Like, like now my agenda is to get you to click on my stories because that's how yeah. I feed my kids. Now it's my, <laughs> my agenda is to get you to actually listen to my podcast because that's how I feed my kids. But like, other than that, like, what is the agenda? Alldolphins.com, by the way. So <laughs> go check them out. Go check them out. Oh, um, and it's funny, too, because I remember – uh, a lot of it was, oh, you you want to see this team fail. And I remember you said to somebody, if they win, it's better for me. <laughs> yeah. They win, I make more money. Exactly. Like, <laughs> so why would I want them to fail? Like, and people say, oh, well, well, failure leads to, oh, people oh, people say failure leads to more clicks. I'm like, no, not really. No, not um, at all. And on top of that, you don't know how miserable it is to go inside a losing locker room. And on a day-to-day -day basis, try to get guys to talk to you and, and be with Discord. I've always had a rule that, that I worked under when I worked for the Sun Sentinel. You win. Mm. I write positive things. <laughs> you lose. I write negative things. That's how we operate. If you, That's how I personally operate. You win. I'll write a glowing feature. You lose. I'll write why your offensive line sucks, but like you, you know, it's it's very simple to me. You want me to write positive things, win. You want me to write the you 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 know don't want me to write negative things, win. Like so, but that's it. It's it's and, and it's allowing like me said, to vent. And, and years, I, I want to say to you, just so you know, and to hmm. give you the praise because I'm not I'm not familiar with Dolphins podcast. I I really. Hmm. I generally have a very, especially during training camp, have a very narrow centric blinders on mentality and focus. And while I've done X's and Omar's and I've been in that space and I've, I've done, I am athlete, I've been in that space. I never listened to Dolphins podcast because I didn't really want to have other people shape my opinions. Like, and I will say now I go to bed with your podcast on. Oh, and yes, it's your your podcast. You are you are the center of my Dolphins universe from podcast standpoint, other than the one that I do, because here's the value that I find in your podcast. You summarize everything yep. that everybody does, mm -hmm. and I don't, 
I I generally try to not pay attention to what like for the first time ever I found out what Travis was tweeting from your show. Yeah. Because I generally don't read it. If it doesn't show up on my timeline, I don't read it. And for some mm. reason, Travis doesn't show up on my timeline. I have no idea why. I know I follow him. I know the fan base thinks we hate each other. We don't. <laughs> he got me a Pepsi the other day. Was the coolest <laughs> dude ever. Because the Dolphins, Dolphins feel like I don't deserve any Pepsi. And I shouldn't be drinking Pepsi, which is true. My wife probably sent them a memo. Do not put Pepsi in the fridge. <laughs> so Travis got me a Pepsi. And I'm, I'm humbled and grateful for it. Um, yeah. Travis and I said... So, from what people say, we have polar opposite viewpoints on everything, which I don't necessarily agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I get the unfiltered, Travis, so I don't know what y'all get. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, we, we don't disagree on, on many things. Uh, I'm sure if you ask Travis how the left guard position's doing, he's not going to say they're doing good. Yeah. Um, so, but, yeah, I don't hate Travis. Let's get that on, on the record. <laughs> Yeah, cause, and, and it's funny, too, because I think it was last training camp or the one before that. I remember I was reading your tweets, and then I think um, Safid was still with doing the thing with you. And I think he was, like, on the opposite end of the field. So you said, like, oh, two or through a pass, but I didn't see who it was. And then Safid was like, oh, that was so-and-so. That's why I follow everybody, because you guys are all over the field, so I can get a good understanding. Plus... Travis, he's so descriptive. I feel like I'm like watching the game. He's like, oh, it, it's a little, too, it's a little, based on what you were reading, it's kind of a little too descriptive to me. <laughs> like, the average fan is not going to get what you're saying. <laughs> not, but that's, you know, hey, everybody tweet how they want to tweet. Do I know I'm, I'm, I'm an acquired taste. I've always said to people, I'm like a shot of Hennessy. I am, mm -hmm. I will burn going down, but I will get you exactly where you need to go. It, it's, it's, that's just how I am. When I, I, I was watching your podcast and you were kind of wrapping up how everybody you, you brought up the point of how everybody sees the scrimmage differently. And mm -hmm. I was like, early on, I was like, 11 on them. Yeah, offense is looking horrible. Yeah. Like, and, right everybody, and, and Perk said, oh, well, I think it's about 50. -50. Up and down. It's a good back and forth. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't back and forth. It, 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 you know, I'm just blunt like that. Like yeah. I could, I could see what's coming when Christian Wilkins starts talking junk and mm -hmm. starts pointing and mm -hmm. and doing Christian Wilkins. Like we got a chance to hear him at one practice that was pushed inside the bubble, the twelve sack practice. Mm -hmm. We we they were literally working um, on top of us because we were in the tower up up in the bubble, and. We got to hear every single word that they were saying. And I had never, I knew Christian talked a lot. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know the level of verbal abuse. <laughs> That's, it, it's, it's, it's really like, it's really offensive. It, it's, like, it's like, I want to call my mom and tell her, like, 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 tell, tell the principal oh on you. God. I could, absolutely understand why the buffalo bills hate him now that. now that i've heard it and and just to give you insight because i i haven't shared this in the the general form during the 12 sack practice and pert knows this because I, I i i i me and him go back and forth with and i'm dying to ask christian about this during the 12 sack practices he was talking mad junk he was in a junk talking zone he was like sack after sack you gonna let one guy destroy your practice? Blah 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 blah. But the running backs were standing right in front of him when he was finishing his sack or his play or his tackle for loss. The running backs are the group that he's like going against, but mm -hmm. he kept turning and going over to the <laughs> slot receivers. And I'm like, what kind of sense does it make for you to talk junk? To the slot, and I'm thinking to myself, what did Braxton Barrios do to you? <laughs> like, who hurts you guys? And and yes, uh Saturday he said, he said, he said something like, I'm a I'm you know, I I I'm 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 a disgusting human. Like it, you know, like I zone out and I just become a disgusting yeah. human. And I was like, Yeah, that sounds about right. That's that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. So the mic'd up Christian Wilkins is not the Christian no. Wilkins that's on the field. Oh, did they ever mic him up? 
yeah, the, like the against the Cincinnati Bengals, a guy pushes him, and he's like, "You don't say that to me." Like he's a very like funny, down to earth guy. <laughs> no, no, no. There, I've always wondered why Robert Hunt refuses to talk back to him. And Robert, Robert, like I, it's like I can't, I won't. And <laughs> I get it now because he's that guy that will like say stuff to really hurt you, and. Like, doesn't, like, in the moment, he's like your wife, where she's yeah. just going to just obliterate you <laughs> when she's angry. Mm-hmm. And then when she's not angry, I didn't mean it. Like, <laughs> like no. Why, you said why'd you it, make you, me do that? I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It came out your mouth. You thought about it. You wanted to hurt me. You said it. So <laughs> I was I was I was so offended for the <laughs> slot receivers based on Christian Wilkins' trash talk. I was like oh bothered, and, and all the other media members were like, <gasps> <laughs> "Oh my god!" So yeah, that makes it makes a hundred percent sense why Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills offensive line does not like Christian Wilkins. Do you think it's true? Here, I got a question for you. I'm talking about Christian Wilkins and Buffalo Bills. I think it was last year or the year before. Do you think he pinched Josh Allen's nuts? Because supposedly that's the rumor in the pileup is he pinched (laughs) his nut. And that's why Josh Allen flipped out. I can neither confirm nor deny. Would I put it past him to do it? Absolutely not. (laughs) I I, got to find what his quote was. It was, it was uh, to give you, to quote it accurate. I'm going to find it because it was, I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. That's Christian. <laughs> like, he said, because because he there was a moment in the scrimmage where he mm. was talking smack to Frank Smith, uh-huh. and like Mike McDaniel was there, oh and I was God. wondering if he was talking crap to them, but he's just talking crap. So I, I I wanted to ask Mike, like, was Christian Wilkins talking crap to you, and how often does that happen? And I'm pretty sure it happens quite often. That's so funny. He's getting. Uh, hey, keep doing it. It's 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 working because he's been dominating. Yeah. Um, but while you're looking that up, talking about uh, somebody that everyone wants to know about, Tua, you know, how has his camp been so far? Now it's hard to really go- tell because we'll know more, like you like you said, uh, over the next two days when they have the joint practice. But overall, like, how's Tua's camp been so far? Is it? But that because from what I'm seeing, it seems like it's a very up and down. But like, what's your thoughts overall of Tua's camp so far? I don't, I don't think it's up and down. Um, he said, "I'm a sick, twisted individual," <laughs> and I was like, "Yep." That, that. <laughs> and, and and it was a moment of honesty. It, it was. There you go. <laughs> he is a sick, twisted individual. He is. Um. Uh. Tua's camp outside of the scrimmage. And the 12 sack practice, mm. it's been relatively good. Ball's not on the ground a ton. Um, when he misses, he doesn't miss badly. Sometimes mm. there are miscommunications. Um, whose fault is that? You don't know if it's on the receiver, if it's on the quarterback. Um, red zone, he's money. Mm. Uh, deep completion every day. S- takes. Holds on. One criticism I have is he holds on to the ball too long. Yeah. And he's had that criticism since his Alamaba days. That's the only criticism Nick Saban has of him. I think that it could potentially lead him to getting hurt at, yeah. at, at times. It has led him to getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says he holds on to the ball to extend plays so that he gives his receivers a look. He gives cramp play scramble ball, gives the, the, the corner, gives the cornerback and the defense a look. And I understand all of that. Mm -hmm. My concern is when we get to game time, how much is the tool we know wants to hold on the ball two seconds longer than he should, who can't – I haven't seen one throwaway. Maybe there's been one throwaway. Mm -hmm. Where is he going to be able to switch it on or will he put himself in harm's way? That's my major concern. I wanted to see him step up as a leader. Um, getting in everybody's face and mm-hmm. letting them know this is not acceptable. Uh, it, it was that was a good step, according to Robert Jones. That conversation was 
mainly about, hey, you know, you weren't ready for this moment, but mm -hmm. this is what it's like. Like we need to cross the T's and dot the I's. Um, too many miscues, too many mistakes. My opinion of it is when Christian and his unit are turned up, it's going to get ugly for you. Yeah. And let's hope that translates to the regular season game. Quarterback pressure in your face is the worst thing you could face. That's why mm -hmm. when I was a kid and I played Madden, you know how you select your franchise, your, 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 your players? Mm -hmm. I always had – Warren Sapp was always my first pick. I didn't care yeah. who my quarterback was because literally if I can – pressure you up your gut and i'm immediately in your face mm -hmm. you can't do nothing no um so and christian seems like i dare to say it maybe it's liam and and robert hunt not being as good as we think that they are mm. but he seems to be turning it up he's like having indomitian sue level practices wow and it's i never i shouldn't say this because christian thinks i already hate him um, or don't like him. <laughs> um, I never thought that he could take his game up another yeah. decibel. Mm. And he's clearly taking his game up another decibel. I'm like, holy crap. Like, you're really that dude right now. Mm. And never, I never would have expected him to be that dude. Like, right now, I didn't think he was a top 10 defensive tackle based on what he did last season. Mm -hmm. Now, I think he might be a top five defensive tackle. Like, it's it's really impactful. Or your interior play sucks. <laughs> you, you choose. Yeah, I don't – hey, you taught me about the trenches. I, I've been now watching the trenches since I've been following you for about six, seven years, and – I keep telling my followers that, hey, if the Dolphins have a top five offensive line, top five defensive line, they'll win the division. And it seems like Miami's just keeps coasting along with the offensive line. And I, like you said, I saw your tweet, the offensive line, left guard. There was like a three-man rotation. They don't know what to do with that left guard position. Four now. Four now. It, it might be it? five. Throw Dan Feeney in it. I don't, like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, you got to figure something out. Like, if, if they don't – like, this week is Grady Jarrett. Mm. Like, Grady Jarrett, let me know. Like, Mike mm. McDaniel should be like, hey, I need you to – I need you to uh, – I need you to whoop tail. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put everybody up against you. Let me know. Let me know who you like. Let, let me know who's the best. Let me know who's the biggest challenge. Because I, I can't really <laughs> – Liam – there's a point when, and you could see it, and they won't admit it, but you can see it where a guy starts to lose confidence. And me, mm -hmm. me and Poupard have talked about it um, on our podcast, All Dolphins. Uh, they, it's like they're playing in quicksand, yeah. and they mentally can't get out their head. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen to too many guys. And, you know, before when we started this whole process, Lee, Liam wasn't losing to Christian Wilkins every rep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it became, okay, he's losing two out of three reps. Then it became, oh, he can't even stop him one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, my God. Then it became, you know, and and he's in quicksand right now, and somebody's got to pull him out. And Poupard made a very good point. He thinks Teron Armstead could pull him out. Yeah. Teron next to him, tandem game, we'll, we'll, we'll get – you know, we'll get this right. We'll get this right. It, and you know, maybe <laughs> we, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> With Connor Williams too, I heard he had a few bad snaps the past couple of days. Is that something that? Again, I was last season. I was worried about that during the off season, and a lot of my Should've subscribers been. were like, "Don't worry about it. You keep worrying about things." And then during the season, yeah. there wasn't a lot of fumbles, but. With the type of offense they run, it's timing. So if two has to go up for the ball, it mm -hmm. and people kept telling me, "Y'all, oh, you're overreacting." Da, da da. Should I continue to be worried about his snaps? No, he got he got it together last year. He got it together, and it wasn't an issue last year. Uh, we've seen maybe three bad snaps from him. Okay, I'm pretty confident that he'll get it together this year. It's a money year. Players players yeah. operate 
differently when it's a money year. Um, <laughs> you know, a good season, he could be a 10 million a year player. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, an average season, you're you're seven million a year. That, that's you know not bad, but it's not a ten million a year mm-hmm. player. Uh, I like Connor Williams. I think that players go through ruts. Maybe he's got to work off some rust because remember he didn't participate in all the off season program. Yeah. Uh, as far as the interior, he'd probably be the least guy I'd be concerned about. I, okay. I'd be concerned. I. I I mean, Robert Hunt taking L's too. Uh, Zach Sealer and Christian Wilkins are problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Robert Hunt's no, you know, in the scrimmage, it was mostly Robert Hunt. It was mostly Robert Hunt Christian was going against. He wasn't picking on on on, on Eichenberg. So, you know, those guys, they got, they got to figure it out. They got to get their act together. And the interior, I, I don't know what the answer is. Isaiah Wynn, I saw him take some losses too. So, you know, we'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Last thing we'll talk about, we'll flip it over to the other side, is defense. Now, again, we'll find out these next two days because they'll be going up against an opposing team, so we'll really get a feel for it. But do you think it's just that Vic – like, I love the addition of Vic Fangio. I love his press conferences. He does not sugarcoat things. It's my favorite thing. Do you think that it's Vic Fangio and the defense is really, like – all right, you know, you got Josh Boyer last year, and now you got Vic Fangio. He's tearing that defense up. Do you think it's it's just, oh, this defense is on, or do you think this offense is struggling? The offense isn't struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, they got him in the 12-sack scrimmage. They they got him in um, the, they got him in 12-sack practice, and mm-hmm. they got him in the scrimmage. Um and maybe if they gave him a red zone series in the scrimmage, the offense would have performed better. Mm. Um, there have been offensive days. There have been days where, like, I believe the practice before it, mm. offense kicked butt. Mm. Christian kind of took the day off. I mean, he was there, but, you know, he was quiet. No, we could, we couldn't hear peep. And offense, tool was hot. Tool was carving people up. And – there, the first week we saw, I thought Vic Fangio's zone was giving two of some issues mm-hmm. and forcing little, slow processing. Or maybe it was he wasn't used to the weaponry because they rotate the weaponry like crazy. Like yeah. you have no idea who two is going to line up with on any given snap. And mm-hmm. same thing with any other quarterbacks. You the, the wide receivers are just churning in and out. So – ultimately they believe that this will benefit the team in the long run and I get supported. I understand it. It's, it's about a better, bigger vision. So, so they were struggling with the zone second week, first two plays of 11 on 11s, 40 yard pass, 50 yard pass. Like they're like, figured it out. Like, <laughs> yeah. And you were like, Oh, okay. And they had a great day. Uh, I think I would put the score now. We've had nine practices. I think I I think I am at the score is five to four in terms of who wins the day. And I've I've mm. begun to do that. Who wins the day? And mm. understand this is different from what I've seen in past years. We would go weeks without Ryan Tannehill yeah. winning the day. We'd go yeah. weeks without Chad Henney winning the day. Um Pennington and Ryan Fitzpatrick, they would they would win the win days. Uh Tua, last year, I would say the offense probably won more than the defense did. Mm. And well, that's Josh Boyer. Um, this year <laughs> it, it's this year it's it's about 50-50. And what I really want to see is what happens when Vic Fangio opens up his blitzes and the full package and you see everything like i would hope that they would use the joint practices to test out everything yeah uh they don't play the falcons this year do they yeah uh friday no 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 i'm saying uh, oh, in the, no in right. the season no oh yeah just just open up everything yeah. just Let it rip. just do you know <laughs> Just make sure they don't share the video with anybody. But yeah, Vic <laughs> should work on every single thing that he could possibly work on. Yeah. Well, that's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. But Omar, 
thank you so much for stopping by man this was this was a blast had a, had a lot of fun picking your brain got some real thank good you. Insight. I appreciate that. um go check out the podcast let them know where it is again alldolphins.com um please subscribe we are building it we're not as fancy as dougie right here <laughs> Um, we, we don't have bells and whistles and sexy intros. We just have good content. I look at it as we got the blue magic. We're giving it to you direct wholesale, um, conversation back and forth, respectful conversation. Um, I respect Pupart. He's the only guy that I have, I, for years I've let leaned on Pupart for things that I had missed in practice and, because we all know who was really watching practice and who wasn't. Yes, exactly. Um, there are guys who do who watch practice, but they don't really watch practice. Mm-hmm. And so we we work quite well together, as people see if they watch the podcast. And then you can check out our work, alldolphins.com. Um, it, the, as Sports Illustrated affiliate, you can just put in alldolphins.com. And what I will say to promote it is we're free there every day. Everybody go. else charges. We give you the same thing, if not more, for free. So hopefully you come and check out our work there. It'll be all linked in the description, and I will tag you. Go check them out. Support. Hit that subscribe button. Help them grow. I don't know. Why do I have to say this, people? It's flipping Omar Kelly. Come on. (laughs) Listen, there's one thing I do want to address with you, and I've addressed it privately with you so people can understand the point that I was trying to make in the off season in regards, okay, you're $32 million over the cap. Okay. You've got about $13 million. Cause what you don't understand is Eli Apple's contract doesn't really count against the 51. Yeah. Um, th- okay. What's going to happen now? And I, I need dolphin fans to really understand this right now. How does this impact your team right now? Right now there's a mad race between Christian Wilkins, Robert Hunt, Raekwon Davis, um, Connor Williams, really those are the only guys, uh, Zach Sealer, for who's going to get the money before Tua gets the money. Mm -hmm. Because Tua's going to get the money if he has the season that he's expected to have. And then when he gets a Jalen Hurts-esque contract, there won't be a lot of money for a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. So right now what you're probably looking at is the Dolphins out there offering everybody Hey, 70 cents on the dollar. Yeah. Who wants to take it? Who wants to be financially secure? Because right now, all of you guys are playing on the Nick Needham risk program, where if <laughs> you get hurt, we're going to be doing charity work by signing you back for a relatively minimum small contract. Exactly. So you could either secure your financial future by accepting this 70 cents on the dollar contract or not. And Understand that there are five other guys mm-hmm. that we're trying to extend, lock up. Somebody's going to take 70 cents on the dollar. Exactly. Whether it's exactly. you or whether it's him. And it's a good position for the organization to be in, but it's uh, it's putting going to put a lot of pressure on those veterans, on the Christian Wilkins. On the, Christian's in a good spot because mm-hmm. realistically, while the Dolphins could franchise tag him, and pay him $16 million for the next two years, this year and next year. It'll equal out to $60 million. He wants the multi-year deal, which gets him $60 million in guaranteed money. Yeah, They don't necessarily have to give him that because they have the franchise tax. But the spot that Christian's in, financially, where they're headed, they might not be able to use the franchise tag. Yeah, <laughs> You can't be $32 million over the cap and then slap somebody with a 22 tag which takes away your flexibility and movement. Mm -hmm. So he's in a good position. We'll see how that plays out. But the point I was trying to make about being $32 million over the cap is it's going to impact everybody this year in terms of them getting their money. Yeah. Now there are no more deals to restructure is what people don't understand. Yeah. If you, if you, (laughs) if you want to create savings, you got to cut players Yeah. and Keon cross and okay, you get, $3.2 $3.2 million. million. Yeah. It, it, eh, but like $3.2 million might give you enough money to make the difference between Dalvin Cook. And I know where you stand on Dalvin Cook. I stand in the same place. Like if you've seen the front game, you do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, you're, 
unfortunately, I'm going to say this, and it's going to hurt Dolphin fans' feelings. You think you're a Super Bowl team. Right now, you're not. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at it. You're not a Super Bowl team. Mm-hmm. And when you're not a Super Bowl team before injuries, what are you down? Yeah. Exactly. Now, you want to chat, you want to push that up a little bit. You go get a guy whose team had the second best record in the NFL last year. Mm-hmm. And I get it. He's not the same player that he once was, but he's better than what you got right now. Yeah. So, exactly. and it adds a dimension to your offense. What happens if Tariq isn't? Tyreek. Mm-hmm. Well, do you do what then? Yeah, exactly. You're, you're stuck. You're stuck in a hard place, man. Yeah. I mean, Dolphin fans, they deserve a dynamic season. And yeah. Right now, I'm looking at a roster. It's going to give you a good season, probably one of the better seasons you've had in a long time. But is it going to be a dynamic season? Mm, I don't really see it right now. Yeah, exactly. But Omar, again. Thank you so much, bud, for stopping by. Everyone, go check out the channel, subscribe, support Omar, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Appreciate it, man.